All right, welcome. This is uh, Tri Rods for February 2022. Uh, Ilyung is here. He's from Cyverse. We tricked him into coming back. He gave a, a Tri Rods talk in August of 2020, which seems like just a couple days ago. And so he's here today. He's going to talk about the MinIO gateway for iRods that he's been working on. Take it away, Ilyung. Hello, I am Ilyung Choi. Uh, I am an R&D engineer at Cybers University of Arizona. Um, my talk for today is about uh, Min IO Gateway for IROS. I have been developing uh, various IROS clients so far. Um, I developed a Go IROS client and IROS Fuse Lite. Also, I developed IROD CSI driver, uh, presented at the uh, IROD user group meeting last year. Um, I am also working on some cloud uh, services uh, to integrate IROD such as Cybers DE and UCSB BISC projects. Uh, that's about me. Uh, let's jump to the main talk. Um, what is mean uh, IO? Uh, mean IO is a multi-cloud object storage uh, MinIO provides a high-performance S3 compatible object store. It currently supports various cloud storage such as S3, Azure, and GCS, and so on. It also supports uh, network storage such as HDFS and NAS. Um, MinIO also provides uh, Kubernetes integration to orchestrate uh, various storage for uh, tiered access. MinIO consists of uh, three components, MinIO server, MinIO gateway, and MinIO client. MinIO server is to configure a new storage cluster, uh, and this is not covered in this talk. Um, MinIO gateway enables access to uh, external cloud storage. As shown, in, as shown in the right figure, MinIO gateways provide data access to various cloud storage, uh, such as uh, Amazon S3. And we made a new gateway to uh, add IROS supports as well. So in this talk, I will introduce IROS gateway to access IROS using MinIO. Um, users uh, access MinIO using uh, MinIO clients. Uh, there are uh, some MinIO clients such as uh, Web Console and the Linux command line tool called uh, MC, and we can use API as well. Development of uh, MinIO iROS gateway is motivated by um, two use cases. First, cybers users often want to move data between cloud storage and cybers data store running iRODs. So cybers wants to help their data migration using MinIO. Uh, second, uh, there are cybers users wanting to reuse existing research workflows uh, developed for um, AWS S3. So cybers wants to run existing uh, machine learning workflows uh, for uh, S3 using Cybers DE and Cybers Data Store running IROS. Min IO IROS gateway is a per user gateway. Uh, a gateway can provide access for a single IROS user. To provide access for multiple users, you will need to run multiple gateway instances. MinIO IROD gateway authentication is done in two steps. Uh, first, MinIO gateway will authenticate the user uh, by user password defined by the user who runs the gateway. So this is important. And then we need to keep this in mind because that is different from the second uh, IROD credential. Um, in this figure, uh, MinIO client requests that the gateway authentication and the gateway will first check uh, if it matches to the predefined user password. And then if it differs, then it um, 
immediately uh, returns failure. Second, if it matches, then the gateway authenticates the iRoad user uh, configured for the gateway uh, by communicating with the remote iRoad server. If a success, then the gateway is authenticated and the gateway allows the user, uh, the user to access the gateway. So in this step, we use iRoad credential. Um, MinIO iRoad gateway is implemented in Go uh, using Go iRoad client. And then uh, the gateway is a re-implementation of the existing gateway originally developed by John Jekwai at BioTeam. Uh, min, min IO iRoad gateway is developed, uh, uh, deployed as a uh, Docker image. So users do not need to uh, rebuild and install. Uh, that often cause um, dependency issues. Uh, to run min IO iRoad gateway, uh, some configuration parameters should be uh, provided in command line. Uh, first, uh, user defined user password should be provided for uh, gateway authentication here. Um, in, in this example, uh, min IO root user and min IO uh, root password parameters are uh, those. Uh, second, iRoad user password or ticket string should be uh, provided for iRoad authentication. In this example, uh, they appear in uh, user password part in URL, the last parameter uh, in the command line arguments. Um, third, we need to uh, provide iRoad host and port and join. Um, those uh, parameters should be uh, provided in the URL. Uh, in this example, the data dot cybers dot org is the host and the one, two, four, seven is the port for IROS. And then I plant part is the John name. And then we need to uh, provide path to the um, IROS collection to access uh, in the uh, last part of the URL here, the slash I plant home uh, IY Choi is my uh, collection to access. Um, there's another important thing to mention. Uh, the gateway opens two service ports. The first is API service port. Uh, if a user wants to access the gateway using client API libraries in code, uh, the API service port should be used for that type of access. The second is um, console service support. Uh, if a user wants to access the gateway using web console or um, uh, min-io min uh, console tool, that is MC, then the console uh, service support should be used. Uh, the port numbers can be changed using uh, dash dash address and dash dash console address uh, flags in the command line. So if you see here in the example, uh, we gave uh, 9,000 port for um, API service port and 9,001 for uh, console address. Uh, and then we gave, um, uh, we mapped the, uh, the port uh, to the uh, host uh, port as well. Um, IROS ticket is also supported in min IO uh, IROS gateway. Uh, IROS ticket uh, can be used to provide access to either uh, IROS users or anonymous users. Um, ticket owner uh, can set uh, restrictions on uh, client host, user groups, and read write permissions for access. Uh, a ticket um, has a name uh, called ticket string that can be an auto-generated pseudo-random string or uh, owner-generated, uh, owner-selected string. Uh, 
IROS users can create a ticket using iTicket command included in i command. Um, I will show you how to do that, uh, uh, how to uh, access the uh, IROS ticket using MinIO in the demo session. Um, in um, MinIO IROS gateway, IROS uh, ticket is used to provide um, anonymous access. Uh, one requirement for using IROS ticket for anonymous access is um, uh, it needs IROS user called anonymous uh, with empty uh, password string. So that's the uh, only requirement. Um, here are two uh, example commands. Um, the left example shows how to run the gateway using IRO's uh, user password. Um, I can uh, set the gateway authentication user and password the same as IRO's user and password uh, to simplify the, the, the command. Um, then uh, I omit the IRO's user and password from the URL part. In that case, we will use this uh, gateway auth user uh, password uh, value as the um, IROD user and password. Uh, the right e uh, example, the right example shows um, how to run the gateway for ticket mode. Uh, I set the gateway authentication user uh, to a ticket that is predefined string. So um, once ticket uh, is given for the username, then we should provide ticket string uh, in the password, password field. Uh, then I can omit uh, the user password part here in the URL. And then we also uh, can omit the uh, John and collection pass. Uh, in the URL because they can be automatically retrieved from the ticket information. So yeah, that's it. Um, and once um, the min IO IROS gateway is up, uh, the gateway can be accessed using various client programs. Uh, there are two official uh, client programs. Uh, the first is a web console, which is built in in the gateway. Um, Second is MinIO client called MC uh, that provides you a command line uh, access uh, for uh, Linux and macOS and Windows system. Also the gateway can be accessed in code using uh, various API libraries. Uh, first, uh, MinIO client API is the one uh, officially uh, provided by MinIO. Uh, it, support, it supports uh, various uh, programming languages such as Java, Python, Go, and JavaScript. Uh, second, uh, any other uh, S3 compatible client API libraries can be uh, used to access the gateway in the code. Uh, for example, Boto3 is an official Amazon S3 client uh, API library. Um, we can use Auto 3 for accessing the uh, MinIO IROD gateway as well. I'm going to uh, show you uh, in the demo. Uh, although it's not uh, fully tested, but other S3 com compatible API libraries uh, also should work since they use the same uh, RESTful based interface. Okay. Uh, now it's time to show how, time to see how it works. Um, let me open up a terminal. Okay. So let me run a gateway, run the gateway here. And you see here, I uh, used some uh, environmental variable uh, to hide my username and password and then yeah use the same uh, parameters in the slide then yeah the service is started now let's open up 
web browser. Then you will see some console here. And then I can provide my IRO's uh, username and password. Um, there will be a, just one bucket that is called IYChoi because um, the IYChoi is the part uh, that is given in the last, uh, in, the, in the path. So that is the uh, collection name actually. So this one from uh, this collection name, and then you can click the browse and then you can find all the data in my uh, home directory in IROS. And you can access these um, collections, double collections and data as well. And you can click them. And then you can also delete and add a new data into the collection. And then, yeah, that's it. That's very simple interface. Um, then let's try another uh, example uh, using the, the ticket. There's another command. So this time I gave the, the username as ticket. And the password is the ticket, uh, ticket name, ticket string here. So I already um, created a ticket. Um, or collection uh, under my uh, home directory in IROS. So the other parts are the same. So I can open up the new web browser. And then the username will be ticket because we <clears throat> set the gateway authentication uh, user ID is ticket. And then password is ticket test. Oh. Ticket test number, that is the ticket string that I gave. And then I see the ticket test directory that uh, collection that is um, the collection name in IROS. And then I can browse it. And then, yeah, you can access the files and um, access the sub collections. And yeah, it's the same thing. Um, because it, it uses the admin uh, the anonymous user account. So it is just for read only. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, so what does, what does the error look like if you try to upload something when you only had read access, does, does the MinIO get a useful error? Does it show it to you or does it just complain? Oh, let me try that. <laughs> I haven't tried that one before. I, I remember that there was, uh, it caused some errors, but. Let me unload some file. Oops. Okay. <laughs> Something happened. Oh, I see an error on the left. It says no rows found. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that may be related to the uh, permission things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still uh, not uh, that stable. <laughs> so, well, no, I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I may need to uh, look into it uh, further. You need to provide a user uh, and password for um, gateway auth uh, in this uh, field to log in. And then the other um, 
thing is we can access the, the gateway using the API. So I will open up, uh, I will start a new container, a gateway container using my iLoad user and password. And then this time here, uh, there is a um, the source code uh, repository and then it has uh, examples there. So uh, let me go back to the, um, the presentation and let me show you. Yeah, I'm going to use this source code. Um, uh, I will use the MinIO uh, client API for a Python code. That is, um, the API is provided by MinIO. And then the code simply uh, lists objects in um, my iRoad home directory. I mean, the, the object means um, data objects in iRoad and collection, I mean, sub collections as well. 9,000 uh, here, because that is the one I set for uh, API service port. So let's try that. So here, mm. then yeah, this is the same source code I just show you. You can perform it like it reads um, uh, the uh, bucket called IYTROY, that is the collection, I wrote collection of my uh, home directory. And then uh, it just prints out all the uh, objects uh, in the collection. So it just, it just prints out uh, the names of them. Yeah, um, and then uh, go back to the slide. Uh, this time uh, I will use the Boto 3 uh, for Amazon. So that is official li API library for S3. Um, it does the same thing, uh, but only different part is how to um, uh, get the collection. Uh, I mean, API is slightly different, but other than that, uh, it does the same thing. Um, and then you should also use the same 9,000 port. So here. Yeah, it has the same code. And then, yeah, it prints out the, the objects in it. Yeah. It's very simple. Um, for future work, um, I will test uh, Minayo IROS gateway uh, to make it more stable, including the, the error <laughs> we just saw. Um, also, I will check if Minayo uh, disk caching can improve um, IO performance of the gateway. Also, I'd like to measure some performance benchmark. Um, also, uh, Cybers wants to develop a new service that uh, provides uh, on-demand instances of MinIO IROS gateway uh, for cyber users. Um, this will provide quick and easy access to cyber data store in existing AWS S3 uh, workflows. That's the, um, the future work. Um, um, yeah, uh, that's it. And, um, you will be able to find the source code and the code examples uh, I used in the slide um, in the uh, GitHub repository uh, here. Um, thank you for listening. And do you have any questions about the gateway? Yeah, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if you mentioned this before, but who like, is this meant or the, is the goal of this to be used in an environment where, um, you know, you have large numbers of users and things? I imagine that's what is the target um, is for this. And if so, um, 
how are you, what are you using to, to manage spinning up all the, to manage all these instance, instances of me and I, uh, the Kubernetes or some other technology? Yeah, we are going to use Kubernetes. So our uh, plan is to uh, use this Minio gateway uh, in um, uh, spin up, spinning up the uh, Minio gateway um, in the Kakao, that is um, the Kubernetes-based um, continuous analysis system uh, platform. So uh, yeah, we are going to run it on uh, um, Kubernetes cluster, actually. And um, is there like, have you done any testing or done any done any experiments around like, um, you know, de deploying this under Kubernetes and having some users test it out? Oh, not yet. We, not yet. That, that is our uh, future plan. <laughs> okay. So we, we had talked about, um, you know, looking into the possibility of having it multi-user and it sounds like, you know, that that's not, either possible or it would require changes in the actual MinIO core of some, in some way. Is that, was yeah. that the, was that the determination? Uh, if we change the authentication uh, mechanisms to support the uh, multiple um, user access for uh, in, in a, a using a single gateway, then it will not compatible with um, the existing IROs, uh, the, the MinIO servers right. and um, yeah, it, it will break the compatibility. So I think that's another option, but uh, what I am thinking now is just spinning up multiple one and then having a just cloud service that uh, manages those instances, I mean, multiple gateway instances per mm -hmm. user, yeah. Because I also saw, you know, on the left side of the console window, you know, there's other things like create new bucket and mm -hmm. user administration. And, you know, it seems like we don't want any of that Mm -hmm. Is there a way to turn off the left sidebar through a configuration parameter so that people don't uh, get confused about, you know. Do you like mean to... in the UI, the web UI? Yeah, yeah. And when you actually launch the console, yeah. Yeah, actually we can, uh, I, I don't think we can disable it um, uh, in the UI, web UI, but we can make another UI or um, yeah, we can integrate it to uh, our existing services, mm, or we can just only provide the API level uh, things and MC command. Um, right. I just think, you know, right. as soon as you give this to somebody and they say, oh, I've got the ability to create things. And it's like, no, you don't, but <laughs> it's better not to even let them think that. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I will, I will investigate those uh, in the future. <laughs> Uh, there's a question in the chat. It says, can the Docker gateway container mount your IROD's credentials? Meaning like, can you get them from a, a JSON environment file? Mm. Yeah, I think I can. Uh, but the, uh, still you need to provide um, the gateway ID, gateway user and password through the um, environmental variable because they are not directly given to the... Um, the gateway code, but the um, the MinIO <laughs> server uh, MinIO interface filters those. Um, um, I mean, first checks the um, the gateway uh, user password thing first. So we need to anyway provide those values. So you can mount it for uh, IROs authentication, but still you need to provide a gateway user name and password. Right. Yeah. Yeah, in the end, it's going to be environment variables because mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what all these tools yeah. are using. Or we can make a script that will right. that that just reads those configuration um, I mean, uh, environmental it variables. It. Yeah, and then run the, the Docker container. Yeah, right. That's another option. Along the lines of authentication, is the native authentication the only supported uh, type right now? Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I'm guessing that's tied to the Go IROD's client. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and so tickets, tickets themselves are only native, and then, yeah, I guess if the user password would be, I mean, I guess it could be a PAM or something, mm -hmm. but that would require Go to know how to do that. Yeah. Right. If I remember correctly, I think this has been so long since we had this discussion. 
the reason you were gravitating towards tickets was it was a more sort of palatable way of giving out um, access that you could copy and paste somewhere. And then, then me, but we were trying to use that as a mechanism to um, try and make this multi user and each user would have their own ticket, but embedded in the, or encoded in the ticket was your home directory or what was the home. And I think we left that conversation dangling and then I have a vague memory of it. Okay. Originally gonna put the information in the token of some kind, yeah. but then we realized that anonymous tickets could actually query to see what they have permission for. And then we didn't have to put the information in the ticket anymore. But wouldn't that still allow us to use, uh, a, like a make a multi-user um, gateway just by virtue of the ticket that you, uh, the token that you have? And so weren't we gonna do something of that sort where we were- um, I, Ilyan can speak to that. I, I know that <laughs> we, we thought about it and then yeah. I think the, the MinIO has to be launched with that root password and so, Unless we can get it to pass us the the magic token, we don't ever see it because the gateway code is it's too late. I think was the is that is that yeah. correct? Yeah, I that was the understanding. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So if if you have just if if you just want to uh, share your um, data with just anonymous users, I mean multiple un anonymous users, that would be fine. You will, you can just run just one gateway and then share it with everyone, then they can uh, make access to the gateway using the anonymous uh, account and then ticket name, I mean, ticket string. Um, but if they have to use their own username, ID and password thing, then they have to spin up a new uh, gateway instances because um, Minayo um, code, the core code does not allow me to um, access the, um, the gateway username and password before they allow <laughs> access, uh, they allow um, the user to uh, get into the um, gateway code. So yeah, that's what happened. And uh, yeah, so basically their idea is the gateway should be per user. Um, yeah, so to, to uh, keep the compatibility with MinIO, we, we cannot uh, change the code of uh, core um, authentication things. Um, but yeah, we can change it, but uh, in that case, they will break the compatibility. Yeah, that's the issue. I think there's one question in the uh, chat for you, Elaine. Yes, it's uh, how is the gateway transferring files to and from iRods? Is it using a streaming method or is it temporarily storing the files inside the container? Oh yeah, it's a uh, streaming method for now. Um, but um, yeah, I will uh, look into the um, the disk caching part of MinIO. So MinIO currently um, provides a disk caching, and then if it it also supports um, buffering uh, mechanisms for upload data, then um, it will temporarily store uh, some data uh, in the local disk and then buffers it and then send it lazily maybe. So that's another assumption, but currently, yeah, it's just streamed the, the data. So it when, when the gateway says data is successfully uploaded or downloaded, then that means that uh, the same um, the same data exists in um, iRoads in backend at that time. It ensures that. And then you can also set, um, um, yeah, so set some um, the caching things, um, yeah, to not uh, perform like that. So, yeah, I, I will uh, look into it uh, next as so a future research. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think we worked with you to make sure that the Go library now knows how to do the multi twelve forty seven. Is that correct, Corey? Does that uh, sound right? Yeah. Um, 
yeah, current, currently the GoIRO client supports a multi um, uh, one to one to uh, four seven uh, port uh, data transfer for parallel upload and download, but um, it's not yet uh, applied to uh, Minio IROS gateway. Okay. Because okay. yeah, because the Minio IROS gateway um, performs. I mean, do do the uh, data writing and reading a little bit differently as I expected. So. Yeah, right. still investigating, I, but yeah, it's not yet applied. I guess it's also going for the, for the web browser part. It's actually going through the browser, so that's not going to be yeah, one yeah, one to one anyway. And then yeah. I guess the API, the con, the well, they use console to mean web. Um, the the API client like mm -hmm. MC, I guess, could do that, but then you've got to translate the the different protocols. Yeah, actually, what I ex first expected was. I mean, sending the data in parallel, perfect parallel, like sending one block of the file and then the second block of the file in parallel. But what actually they implemented, MinIO implemented was sending the first block. And then once it's done, then sending the second block. And it's, it's serial, not parallel. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's not the, um, the IROs that's not the same as the IROs parallel upload download thing. No. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's called streaming. <laughs> yeah. So if we introduce uh, buffering and caching things, then we can still use um, the IRO the parallel upload download things um, to implement, um, I mean, to improve the performance. Like if we buffer the right uh, data written uh, to MinIO, then we can just buffer it to the local disk first and then use the parallel upload uh, API of IROS to uh, quickly upload the, uh, the data to IROS. And that's another mm -hmm. option. That, that's why we, I will um, investigate it later. Yeah, and then the same thing should be also applied to um, IROS to fuse light and CSI driver things. <laughs> yeah, the same feature <laughs> reusing everywhere. Excellent. Are there any other questions? We're gonna send Ilyung to Belgium in July. That's the that's the main question. <laughs> I I I do not know about that because uh, <laughs> uh, I, I I'm going to uh, yeah start the um, the green card application. In that <laughs> sure. case, I cannot uh, go outside <laughs> of the United States from summer. <laughs> sure. But but you can uh, Ilyang, you can uh, beam yourself from Zoom. Oh yeah, sure. If if you allow me to do it uh, through Zoom, then yeah, I will. <laughs> I think I think the, the committee may allow that. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, actually, I have another um, uh, things to report about the CSI driver. That's long story. So yeah, yeah because yeah, as as you guys know, we. I recently applied the CSI driver to uh, Cyber's DE uh, vice analysis and it worked very well. So yeah, I want to report the, the success. Um, yeah, absolutely. We, we have yeah. definitely heard heard more and more interest uh, from people when they realize there's a Go client library. They, they, sit up a little, they sit up a little closer to the screen. It's good. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you everyone. Uh, I think that might do it. 40, 40 minutes. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll get this online and share it to everyone who couldn't make it in person. So we'll clap for you. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Thank you. Clapping. Thank you. Forgot how to clap. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.